Welcome back to Override's Redstone Tutorials. Uh, the last episode, we sh I showed you how to make a very simplistic door opening mechanism using a bunch of levers. In this, I'm going to show you uh, how to use gates to make your combinations very more complex, but still easy to design. Uh, what we're going to do is use a series of inverters and AND gates to make a combination that opens the door, and then make it uh, one step further and show you something else really cool. What we're going to use is a basic system that implies if you want two signals to be activated to activate a third output signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to build our basic gate. This is what's known as an AND gate. And if you're not sure with gates and everything, check out the Mindpedia. But a really easy way to think about it is if this one and this one are on, this one will also be on. In this case, this one is off and this one is off, therefore that one will be off. That's how an AND gate works, it's that and that. If this one is on, or that one is on, or that one's off, it's still off. So that's what difference if you've heard of OR gates. So basically, when both of these are on, that one's on. If both of these are off, that one's off. If one or the other is on, it's still off. So the only way to turn the output on is to turn both of these on at the same time. That being said, we're going to apply this to how we're going to open our door. Now the easiest way to go about this, what, the way I like to design my locks is, I use my set combination and I preset it while I'm building. So let's make this an easy one and just do on, off, on, off for the combination that's going to open the door. Now that we have that, we're going to look back here and make it so that those inputs are all going to be true when we use them in our gates. So, we're going to make our redstone to connect where the locks were touching out to here. As you can see, the, the first and second one are turned on because the switches on the other side are on. The way we're going to make these turn on is basically just invert them using the knot gate that we covered in the last one. So now that's going to be on. wires will come out there. Those are now both on even though that one over there is turned off. We're going to invert this one and then just take this one all the way back this way. So now all of these switches are technically giving out true signals even though they're in an on off on off state. This is what's going to be used to verify a correct signal. So now we use what we know about AND gates. Okay, we're going to use stone then. Okay. That one goes there, that one goes there, this one goes there, and don't forget to connect them because that's a big debugging program right there. So that's giving off a true signal because both of these are in the correct position. Now we're going to make another AND gate to connect those two inputs to give a correct input. Don't forget to connect the middles, and that's giving a true output. Now, to connect these two signals, we're going to make another AND gate. And one little key about gates is you have to make sure that your wires are actually going forward to touch the blocks. If you give it something, say if I wanted to just put the gate right here, it wouldn't work because that one isn't pointing towards that gate right there. Unless they may have fixed it, as far as I know. Now, see how that's giving a true statement? But that torch isn't being changed colors because it's not actually pointing into the block. You have to make sure that your wires are oriented to your blocks correctly. Just fix that. And these just have to be connected. Make our final AND gate. Now, this is what's going to verify our true signal. So when all the combination is correct, this wire will be lit. Now, we're going to take this all the way back. Now, I'm going to say we don't have enough space. Uh, oh, no, we're good. What we're gonna do is, I ran into this before. Uh, so you're gonna walk in and you're gonna want your room to be out here. What you could do is make it so you don't see any of this stuff. And just run the wire on top of everything. Almost like if you were gonna wire up a house, you want so that you can't see the wires, because uh, some people like to see the wires in their house, that's nice, but I like to make it hidden and mysterious so you, like, people never know. So that's just going to go all the way out here. We might need a repeater or 
sorry, not not gate as some people like to refer to it as. The double knot. But this should work just as well. Unless, of course, it doesn't actually touch the door, which then we'll just change it. That's what you get for making live circuitry, you know? Sometimes it doesn't always work the correct way, but at least you get to see the debugging process, which helps a lot. So that's going to point to that. We don't want that either. So we're just going to give that a quick fix. If you saw how that was touching that one, we don't want that because that could mess up the way the, the locking mechanism works. So, oh, wouldn't you know, that doesn't work that way. In fact, I believe I'm exactly 16 blocks away, and if you remember, the current can only be carried 15 blocks. So we're going to have to put a repeater in here. I'm trying to think what would be a great way to get this. Unless I can do this. And get that wire on here. Oh, see? Yeah, so I'm running out of signal. So I could actually turn this into a repeater block. Make it nice and easy. one on top. Nope, not from it, on top. Last one goes on it. And perhaps it's lagging out the game a little bit. I gotta figure out a way to fix that. That's it. Okay, there we go. So there's the repeat signal. Okay, great. And just need to make it so that the door opens. Actually, what we could do is, since we have that repeater in there, we want to extend the signal, we can make it go around to the other side. So you walk in, this comes there, comes down here, and then it could connect to there. Aha! Hopefully this will work. Not, we'll find another way. But we shall see. Yes, this will work. Awesome. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, that's pointing into the door, which is good. That's exactly what we want. Now we just connect this. Ooh, and the door opens. Yay! So that's a pretty neat thing. You walk in, you don't really see anything, you just go forward and then you do whatever your business is. Probably over here, and then this is all covered up. But for the sake of showing you guys everything, I'm just gonna leave this open so you can check the cuts out. So a little recap is, you have your, your levers all out here. Now we're going to put everything in the off position, and you can hear the door closed. So that door is closed. Now I'm using a wooden door, of course you can break it open, but if you're going to test your circuits, I'd say use a wooden door, and then when you know that everything works, replace it with a steel door. It's uh, the same thing as a wooden door, only replace everything with steel. And then that can only be opened with redstone circuits, so that makes it pretty secure. So everything's that way. The door is closed. Now we put in our correct circuit or our correct combination, and the door opens. You notice there's a very, very tiny bit of lag, and that just means the redstone is processing everything, and then it runs all the way back here. Um, huge circuits. I've had one or two second delays with like 16-bit encryption. Right now, this is only four bits. But once you get to like really mega combinations, it gets pretty intense. So that's this basic idea. Uh, if I have enough time, I will show you how to incorporate a button mechanism so that when you when you turn these all on, then you have to push a button in order to open the door only if the combination is correct. All right, now that we know about that, what we're gonna do is try to incorporate this by adding a button to it. So the button will open the door while these are correct. If these aren't correct, the button won't do anything. Now, if you have the button adjacent to the door in any way, the door will open regardless of your combination. We don't want that. So what we want to do is have the button not touching the door, maybe a square off to the right or something. Alright, so what we're going to do is put the button up here above the torch. So when you see the torch, you know I have to push that button. Now, I got rid of this stuff over here so it doesn't get confusing and I have to remake everything. Uh, what we want is, so that button's right there. We want redstone pad coming all the way back here. So when the red when the button is pushed and the lock is correct, then the door will open. So obviously we'll use an AMP gate. So we're gonna make this come all the way back. And we're gonna wire it up. For debugging purposes, you can use a switch instead of a button. 
and then just leave the switch in the on position and check so that you know when the button is pushed it'll do that. Um, for this scenario I'm just going to straight use the button because I, I, I know pretty much what I'm doing. So this is going to come out this way. Uh, since we're not going to use this area much, actually no, we're not going to do this at all, so do that. And then put that there. Place some more redstone. Now we just have to connect this one to the other gate. So then we have another end gate that we're making. So now what's going to happen is when the combination is correct and the button is pushed, the door will open. So it's almost like uh, how a master lock would work so that you have to put in the right combination and then you have like a release button or something. Now we're definitely going to need to have a repeater on this or a double knot to extend the signal. So we're just going to build around this, and we don't want this to touch that in any way to make it interfere with that. So, place this up here, that over there, and then we're going to have it so that this comes up again. And this is pretty simplistic once you think about it. Uh, you can experiment with tons more bits. I've made up to 16 or 32 bit combinations, and it gets pretty intense. Uh, make sure you write down your combinations somewhere, because it stinks when you, you forget how to get into your own lock and then you have to break in and look at your combinations and figure it out all over again. Alright, so then we just have to keep building these. Over. In fact, we're gonna make a little archway. Take it. Fell down. Go all the way back this way. Because what we want to do eventually is make it so that this goes over there. No, I didn't realize. When you're walking into the, the doorway, you're walking in this way. So we're gonna make it so that there's a little step up, so that you know you can walk through it this way. If I have some time, I'll show you how to pretty this up so you don't notice that this whole place is wired up. There we go. Like that. Like that. There we go. So now, now you can walk through. It's not like you're. In a construction zone or anything. There we are. Okay. So we're gonna make this one go up just as well. Alright, so we're just gonna build this one up so that the redstone isn't in the way of your walkway. Come up. Come up again. sloppy because I'm just doing this live and trying to get it done as quick as possible but normally you can make it so it looks pretty nice and you don't notice it when you're walking through. Definitely gonna need to put another uh, repeat signal so that it extends further. Alright so that's connected. Now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna invert the signal right here. So you make your double repeater, and bam, and that, and this. All right, so now looking at this, trying to count this one out, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, exactly fifteen. This should this should work just fine. So I'm just gonna walk through here as I can. All right, so. We put in the correct combination from last time. One, zero, one, zero. The door doesn't open, but when we push the button, the door opens. And notice the door shuts quite quickly because the button only works for about a second. And then you walk in, you do your business, whatever it is over here, and then to come out, in fact, what you could do, which is very simple, I just realized it right now, you could make a button, a button, and just have it on the outside of the door so that when you push it, you can leave. See? And that doesn't affect the door in here at all, see? Door opens, door closed. Just opens you out. You don't need a combination to leave because, you know, assuming that you are inside, you know how to get inside. You don't need a combination to leave. So that's it for this episode. Uh, stay in tune for some more tutorials and overall Minecraft stuff. 
See you later.